Hello and welcome to this episode of Discussions with Kate. We've got Kate back from our holiday, hopefully a relaxed and reset for getting back on track on things. So Kate, how's your last week been? Um, it was really good, actually. It was great to be able to get out, to, to, to go and, and uh, have a proper staycation and, and to, to be enjoying that holiday environment when we'd got to Freedom Day. Obviously, it was a bad week to have been away, uh, given what was going on politically. Uh, when I booked it and sorted it all out, of course, we thought Freedom Day was going to be in June, not July. And I thought I would be free and able to escape and it would have all settled down. The, the positive was that I was in North Devon um, and you forget about how bad rural broadband is when you are fortunate enough to live in central London. Uh, so, so the good thing was I had almost no phone coverage, definitely no Wi-Fi coverage and so had a week where I wasn't doing media calls. So I feel sorry for the team behind who were grappling with the, the big issues of last week. Uh, with the sudden announcement about nightclubs, mandated vaccine passports, the con ongoing challenges of the pandemic, which have really dominated the, the, the sort of media um, and operational concerns over the last week and, and kind of took the shine off Freedom Day in, in a sense, because we, we had that sort of fear and uncertainty around what restrictions might be around the corner, having had a one way traffic going through that we were we were lifting restrictions to suddenly have the prime minister announce out of the blue that there was mandation coming at the end of September on, on vaccine passports um, and to have that sort of concern around the, the high level of cases. Then coming back at the, this weekend, where we've had a much more benign media environment and it all seems to have settled down a little bit within government, um, where there is a, a greater sense of optimism um, that we are moving in that one direction, that the, the system is irreversible um, and that things are getting better. Obviously, that takes into account not just the, the good weather. Everybody feels better when it's good weather, but obviously the government can relax slightly more people socialising outdoors, fewer people indoors in the rain. Um, and you've got a five days, six days worth of, of really positive news on, on cases and vaccination numbers that, that get, might give the, the government sort of uh, optimism that they've turned the corner, that we might have moved down from the peak, that we've escaped the worst of the third peak. Too soon to tell. Uh, but when you've had six, seven days of, of continually falling cases, 40 percent down on where it was predicted when when they came out with the, the health secretary saying at worst case scenario, we could be at 100,000 cases a day. Neil Ferguson, uh, the imperial professor, saying it could be double that. We're actually seeing cases fall. It's 40 percent down from the peak that we had then um, a week of falling cases. You've got the schools uh, that have now broken up fully. You've got universities that have broken up fully. You've got that natural fire break of the, that school holidays. I think the, the government will go on its holiday, um, having breathed a sigh of relief that, that things are, are looking as though they're moving on the right track. Uh, that may then feed through into some of the policy areas that we've been really pushing on over the last week. As I mentioned, vaccine passports, but also the pandemic, that the government might feel more um, at ease with making some concessions in those areas or moving differently in, in those areas. So if we turn to those uh, first and then we can we can perhaps look ahead to sort of what comes next when, when Parliament returns are at the beginning of September. You know, in vaccine passports, as I say, quite a bolt from the blue. The week before, the government had said that they would look to encourage their use where appropriate, but it would be left uh, on a voluntary basis, it will be at operator's discretion, then to have it sort of referenced as being mandatory. You can see the government's concern coming through there about relatively lower levels of take up amongst the vaccine, um, of the vaccine amongst a younger age group. And I say it's relative. You're looking at 60 percent as opposed to 85 percent in, in the over 40s, 60 percent of the under 30s having their first jab government really concerned to make sure that people have their second jabs and follow through to give them the full protection. Um, so I do think there's an element there of, of stick rather than carrots to try and get younger uh, age groups fully vaccinated. You can see that coming through today in, in the announcements or the, rather the failure to rule out that vaccines will be required for um, students to go back to halls of residence or to go into lectures when uh, university returns in October. So you can see that caution coming through in an attempt to ensure that you've got that wall of vaccination going all the way through the population right down to the 18 year olds when you get to, to middle of September. 
So, you know, I, I still think that, that, that there is more of a, a sense of coercion coming through with that talk about vaccine passports for nightclubs. Um, and there's still a lot of work that we can do to make sure that anything does come back when it comes in, it, it can come in in a voluntary way rather than it being mandated and that it can be workable to make sure that, that businesses are not adversely affected. So I think there's a lot more work to be done there. But you can see a government softening of approach as that more positive news around vaccine take up, the efficacy of the vaccine, number of people in the community who now have antibodies is at about 92 percent. That's both um, vaccinated immunity and acquired immunity through catching the disease. And the signals that the cases are moving down may give a greater sense of relaxation. But obviously that point of caution, do you need to put restrictions back in place in September to avoid having to lock down in the autumn if we have a fourth wave? It seems clear now that COVID is moving as flu does in three monthly cycles. And, and you're seeing that across the world. So looking ahead towards that. Uh, restrictions. And then, of course, the pandemic, while the government was seeing rising cases, very high levels of cases, a real nervousness about easing up on that self-isolation policy, extending the policy of, of, of test to release to, to a wider range of uh, industries. Again, you've seen a, a greater willingness of the government to look at that in, in, in greater detail as we've gone over the last week, week and a half, where you can see that progressive positive uh, trend in terms of cases. So the cabinet met again today to talk about whether they could extend that uh, exemption from self-isolation to a broader range of, of workers. Still think it will not be hospitality, it will still be critical workers, but it could help with some of the pressures on the supply chain. And it certainly helps to put pressure on to get that date of the 16th of August brought forward. And we worked with the, the London Mayor Sadiq Khan to get a letter going in to reinforce that point uh, about hospitality in the capital. So, uh, again, regular meetings with government, regular pressure points coming through uh, around the impact that this is having commercially on businesses. And the more evidence we can provide from members to, to reinforce the point about the impact that the pandemic is having on the ability of tourism, and hospitality to recover, the more likelihood we are to be able to get the government to, to have a change of part on, on, that, on that policy. But it is going to be dependent upon that positive case numbers continuing. And all eyes really towards the end of this week when we should have the first clear indications that the 19th of July has not caused an acceleration of, of cases coming forward. Likely to be a slight uptick, likely to be a pause coming through in the rate of decline that we've seen over the last week. But uh, by the end of this week, we should have a clearer indication that, that the 19th of July has not caused a further mass uh, number of cases and therefore the recovery is back on track. At that point, I think ministers will be more willing to pause, uh, breathe a sigh of relief and look forward to the next phase. Are there any other key dates we should be looking out for? Um, no, not really. I, I think the end of this week, as I say, will be, be the numbers when you're, you're looking at cases. You've got about a 10 week period where um, uh, lifting of restrictions might cause an increase in the number of cases. And then obviously you've got a, a week to 10 days after that before it starts to feed through in hospitalisation. So uh, you're looking, that's why they've projected out towards the 16th of August. Um, the next set of, of key dates we're looking at uh, it will be around end of July when they're looking again at the travel policy. Should they uh, extend that? Uh, you've seen an announcement today that um, British expats who are double vaccinated can come into the UK without self-isolation from, from those countries. Again, that's a big step forward because that's been the difficult point about the level and type of vaccination you've got in other parts of the world. Does that prohibit you for, from reopening the borders? So you can see that steady movement um, towards greater relaxation. Uh, but I, I think then you are really looking towards the end of August and, and a return back in September. And is that for international travel coming to, you know, UK and welcoming more tourism uh, from then yes, on? Yes, I, I think, you know, that's the area that the government has maximum caution. Keep the borders tight. Make sure that you're not importing variants. They were badly burned by the accusation that they hadn't jumped in quickly enough to stop the Delta variant being imported. I, I actually think it was it was already in the country, but they'll want to avoid that accusation again. And I don't think you'll see a greater relaxation of non-UK citizens coming into the UK and, until you get to that point towards the end of August. And on the pandemic, is that still very much a hot topic in the media at the moment? 
Yes, I, I mean, it, it, it's daily that the, the media are looking for stories, looking for angles. Now, I, I think that the, the, we've probably reached the peak of the pandemic in hospitality. It's interesting to note that other sectors of the economy are probably two to three weeks behind us. Uh, we, we saw it first probably about five, six weeks ago, emerging in the northwest and the areas where you had the highest number of cases. It's gone through hospitality and across the, the country. We are seeing acute problems in many of our tourist hotspots. When, when I was in Devon, I saw lots of notices around about restrictions um, to service levels and type of service because of the pandemic. You've seen a, a week full of pressure where it's been the, the, the hot topic on, on the media's lips. Undoubtedly, the focus on the Olympics will move the media away from that. But, but I think they sense that this is an area of weakness for the government. This is an area where the government doesn't have a, a, a robust answer for industry. You've had apologies from, from ministers about the challenges that it's putting the, the businesses under. If those cases continue to fall, that media pressure will continue to grow. And do you think government will make any additional changes in terms of bringing that date forward for, for hospitality? It does seem really unlikely that they'll bring the date forward now. And actually, for hospitality, I'm not sure that that date is the most critical thing at, at this point in time. Obviously, any movement forward would help for those who are double vaccinated. But the 16th of August only really helps for those that are fully vaccinated. So that's double jabs and your two weeks. So for an industry that has 60 percent of its workforce under 30, I'm not sure that that date is going to be as helpful as it will be for, for other parts of the economy, notably our supply chain and drivers. So we do need to get a workable test to release scheme in, in place and we understand that it's testing capacity and it's the regulation for those tests that is, is stopping that at the moment. So we, we need to maintain the pressure on the government to make sure that we've got something that works for all parts of the economy and works for all ages of workers. And how far along do you think government are in terms of looking at that kind of solution? Uh, I, I think that they continue to keep it under review um, and we need to keep the pressure on them to make sure that they get this right. Um, it's it's the topic that is is on everybody's lips at any government meeting we have. Challenge now, of course, is that we're moving into a recess period where ministers are having less frequent meetings uh, and the opportunities to raise that on a, a weekly or twice weekly basis are, are dissipating. So we are continuing to raise that. But you've seen over the last two weeks, the government has kept it under review. You've had three or four changes. We ha are, are under no doubt that they will continue to do that going forward. And you mentioned that ministers are in recess. What are they thinking? What will their plans be? Well, I think that they will turn their attention to, to what happens next as we come out of uh, the COVID crisis and we move forward into that recovery phase. You're really looking at starting that recovery in September. Government talking about return to the office being gradual over summer. Um, you're talking about sort of uh, furlough and other support measures falling away in September, notably VAT. They will then start to turn their attention to how do they implement and translate the tourism recovery plan, the hospitality strategy, both of which were just published in the last month. They set out quite ambitious objectives for government um, that our sector will recover a year ahead of international and economic forecasts. So that's quite a big job for government to deliver that. They're going to have to have a series of good policies, regulatory, fiscal uh, stimulus measures to be able to get the, the um, sector recovering at that speed and pace um, and getting back to, to normal. And I think, you know, they're, they're also acutely aware of the ongoing skill shortage labour shortage challenges. And, and so there's a big piece of, of work that will be done over the summer to be able to get the vocational education strategy right, to be able to get support going into sectors like hospitality that, that need to get uh, uh, upskilling a domestic workforce that's had disruption to, to that uh, um, over the last two years. And there's a, a lot of work we've been doing with the, the business department, but also the Department for Education to make sure that we get hospitality included in the lifetime skills guarantee, that we get hospitality and catering and tourism qualifications recognised within the vocational education strategy, and that we get the funding that goes alongside that. Um, you know, the lifetime skills guarantee would be really helpful for, for individuals who want to boost their leadership skills, key to, to ha having that change of mindset about hospitality as a career to help those people fund the, the, the courses that they need to go on to, to build leadership qualifications, to build management expertise. That's a really big topic for the government to get there, to grips with. Over and above that, all those strategies I mentioned, tourism, hospitality, but also high streets, 
focus on the need to get the business rates regime right. There's a lot of work going on internally within government ahead of the autumn statement when they need to look at business rates and the conclusions of that review, uh, and then looking at uh, the sort of tax and regulatory regime around VAT. So as, although it's summer uh, and you'll have ministers and MPs in recess back in their constituencies, the ministerial workload will continue, the official workload will continue, and those civil servants will be working on the detail that goes behind those warm words of the Hospitality Strategy Tourism Recovery Plan to make that translate into action ready for when they come back in September. So I think what we'll do in one of the future podcasts is go into that in a little bit more detail, unpick it, work out what we need to do. But certainly it gives us a really strong platform to be lobbying on the key issues that, that matter to operators on a day to day basis. That is definitely a topic that sounds really, really important for our industry. And it's really great to hear that government have actually put that as one of their plans um, for recovery and actually focused on hospitality as well. I think that really shows how our industry is being viewed coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. I think the perception of the industry within government is is really quite significant. We've got better recognition with a, a, a hospitality division within the business department, a minister that's responsible for the sector, a sector council to sit alongside the tourism sector council. Lots to build on from September when MPs return. And I think for members, great opportunity while MPs are back in their constituency to get them into their venues, to talk to them, show them what's happening in hospitality, show them what they can do in their local communities to build that goodwill, which we will need in September when we come back to lobby really hard for an extension of the VAT cut, reform of business rates and all of those things that we know the sector will need to recover. We will unpack more on that um, in our future episodes. I think that's all we have time for today on this podcast, getting a little bit more insight on what's going on and what UK hospitality has been pushing for in government, still pushing hard on those pandemic and the vaccine passports there by the sounds of it. So thank you, Kate, for giving us another update on what's been happening. Still with your finger very much on the pulse there, despite having your time off. Um, as Kate mentioned, if you are interested in organising one of the MP visits to your venue and you're a member of UK Hospitality, do get in touch with our team on policy at ukhospitality.org.uk and they will be more than happy to help arrange that. We will be taking a little break for the summer and we'll be back on the 19th of August when we will catch up with Leon, our Executive Director in Scotland, to find out what's been going on there. For any other questions or if you want to speak or hear about any other topics on this podcast, do email us as well, um, membership at ukhospitality.org.uk. 